What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, and today I'm going to show you the quick and easy way to make an amazing horror movie logo with the distort filter and displacement filter in Photoshop. The cool thing is that I'm an art director in Hollywood that designs movie posters for a living, and I use this technique quite a lot because it's quick, easy, and efficient, especially when you need to design. I don't know, 10 logos a day every once in a while. <laughs> what? All right, guys, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'm just gonna make, well, I already made a quick 10 by 10 inch square with a white background canvas to get going on this funky title logo for a movie. And we're just gonna call our movie Poster Grind the name of this channel but you can call it whatever you want so first things first go ahead and make a layer that is going to hold your type and to keep this simple without going into too many different fonts i believe everybody should have impact on their photoshop photoshop of course you can look for different fonts that are a little more appealing and less used. Impact is uh, used quite a bit. But the reason I wanna use this, I just wanna use a, a really heavy weighted font because as you'll see, uh, when we're using these interesting glitch and scratches and other uh, assets to make this logo, the thicker, the better in this case. What I already did is picked out a bunch of really cool glitchy, assets uh, like this one here it's kind of funky i don't know where we're going to use it uh, this glitchy one i already know what we're going to do with this one and some scratches and what i have is an annual subscription to envato elements i believe it's just over 200 bucks and what i get with that is a ton of stock photography textures uh, there's even a lot of B-Real if you're making movies and videos or YouTube videos, I should say. And uh, for me, that $200 is money well spent because if you're working uh, with other stock photography platforms like Shutterstock or Getty, it does get quite expensive. Now, I'm saying this is for my personal use. It's personal enjoyment and tutorials. But if you're working for a professional design agency, uh, you will most likely have to work with Shutterstock and Getty, which are definitely on the more expensive side. All right, enough talking. Uh, go ahead and pick out some funky textures. Uh, I have one glitch one, and then I have the scratch one, and then I have this other funky one. And the first thing we're gonna do is, let's just work with our type. So go ahead and Command T, transform that, and make our type a little bit bigger. And then the next thing we're gonna do is work with displacement. Displacement is found in filter, under distort, and displace. But before we can do anything funky, uh, we gotta go I think we're gonna start with the glitch. See this glitch pattern? Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Command T to transform. And then it's gonna set right there, uh, kind of in the center, centering it uh, on our type. And you can just decrease the opacity and kind of see where it sits. Right there's perfect for me for now. And what we're gonna do is make a, well, we can make this black and white. I think it would work just as well with a little bit of that color you see, but for tutorial purposes, go ahead and hit Command U and drop the saturation. And that looks pretty good. I was gonna add a little bit of uh, Gaussian blur, but it's pretty blurred. And I think it's gonna make a really cool effect for us. Now go up to file because we're gonna have to save this as a separate file, as you'll see once we use the displacement filter. So go up here, save as, and we're going to just call it, we're just gonna rename it to keep a little, keep everything a little organized. We're gonna name this uh, glitch underscore D-I-S-P for displacement. And then we'll do 01 just so that we know this is number one in case we wanted to make more. Hit save. Now that's on our desktop. Go ahead and check off the eyeball. Go back down to your type. Now we get a really funk it up so hit up filter and then we're gonna go to distort displace but first we have to convert it to a smart object forgot about that which is no big deal because if we want to mess with the type a little bit like let's say the kerning's a little off or the spacing we can go ahead and do that convert it to smart object for now and now here's our displace let's just see what happens with the preset numbers of 10 and 10 on the horizontal and vertical scale go ahead and hit okay and this is where we're going to go ahead and pick our already pre-saved PSD file, which was glitch underscore disp 
underscore oh one so hit open and now it's using that and look at look at that that's pretty cool so we already have a really cool effect with basically one two three steps and you can turn it on and off right below there to kind of see what we're working with if we want to mess with the kerning we have a smart object so we can mess with the kerning meaning we can push the letters a little closer together like let's say grind here uh, we we want that to be a little closer so double click on top of the smart object and it takes you to its own little area and first things first i want to kind of make our canvas size a little bit bigger so go ahead and push c and we're just going to move it out a little bit just in case some of the kerning gets uh gets pushed over. I'm not saying it's going to, but just for tutorial purposes, know that you can do this. Then go ahead and hit enter and hit T for text. And right now we're just gonna kern this grind to make it a little closer together. So let's make this R closer to the G. So go ahead and hit option with the arrow key. And we're just gonna push this over a couple times so it's closer. And we're gonna do the same thing with all the other letters. That looks pretty cool. Now I don't know if it's cool for our logo, maybe the grind, just is a little closer together and poster, we're just gonna leave that way. Uh, it's kind of interesting because grind, I'm thinking of grinding together. And once you do that, we visually communicate that it's kind of the letters are ground together a tad bit. So let's just see what happens. Now go up to file and then hit save. And now go back to our other, where we're working. And you'll see that by hitting save, it pushed our letters together. And that's a really cool feature, feature about working with smart objects. Now I'm liking where we're going, but I feel like we can mess it up even more. So let's see what else we got here. So we got these really cool scratches. And what I'm gonna do is make those a little bit bigger and then just kind of see where they line up on our logo. And then let's just go ahead and drop the opacity to kind of see where some of this grunge is gonna end up. All right, that's cool. So head up back to file. Now we're gonna save this as a different disp placement PSD file. Uh, we're going to call this scratch. And now go ahead and hit save. And now that's saved. And now let's go back down to our logo. Make sure that you're clicked on it. And then go back up to filter and hit distors, distort and then displace. And we'll keep it at 10 and 10 again because I liked what it did last time. Hit OK. And now we're going to go to the scratch displacement. Hit open. And now we got a little bit more of a distortion happening, which is kind of cool too. So let's just go in and see what's going on. Now, a lot of that is looking a little on the pixelated side, which I'm really not too keen on. So I think what we're gonna have to do is blur out another displacement map. And so we'll go back up to our scratches, go to filter, and then go to blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna blur it a little bit. So right now, let's do 2.5 or 2.4. Let's see what happens. Now we got to go save it out again. So save as is. And since we've already done a scratch displacement map, we're going to call this one number two. Hit save, get off of there, go back to poster, grind, release that bottom one because that was our first displacement. And then we're going to go back up here to distort one more time, displace, keep those at the same, displacement two, open and now let's take a look at it a little closer now we just want to kind of figure out which which each displacement is wow so that gets when we use all three of them that's pretty distorted and now it's kind of looking like it's on fire which i don't mind but let's see what happens when we take that middle one off now it's looking a little less on fire and then that's with just one displacement and that's back to normal so you can toggle in between each one and see which combination you want to go with see that that's pretty dope and that's a little hardcore so it's kind of whatever you want to do. Since we're going with a little bit of a hardcore situation, let's just roll with it. What we can also do is we can go back in and add a little more texture on top and we'll just use a mask for that. So we haven't used this texture yet. I kind of want to see what's going to happen. So go up there, turn it on and then double click and it's going to bring us in because it's a smart object. And then from here, uh, we can mess with creating a mask and the reason I do it this way is because we can go back and forth if we have to change or the desired uh, results of the mask because it's definitely uh, something that you can work with so go up to select and then we're going to hit up color range and then we just want to kind of use the eyedropper for and look for the blackest black 
And then we can always mess with the fuzziness. So if we go to the right, it's going to make it a lot less less to pull from. And then if we go to the left, it's a little bit more hardcore. I think somewhere in the middle there should work. So hit OK. And now it's selected our uh, selection. And then create a mask by going down here. Hit the mask button. And then we can kind of see uh, what it's going to look like. So that's the invert of it. Let's see what happens. So go ahead and hit Command C. Let's copy that and bring it back into our file and hit Command V and it just drops it right on the top. And make sure you get rid of this, or not get rid of, but turn that one off. And then right here, we have our mask. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it down to our logo. So all you do is hit Option and then click on the mask and then drop it down to the logo and make sure the logo's on. And then there you can kind of see uh, the effect. Now it's linked, so we can't really move it around but unlink it and then hit Command T and then we can move our texture around and kind of see what looks cool. So it's really functionable and you can even make, make it smaller if you feel like some of the textures are a little too big. So that's pretty cool. I mean, whatever, I'm gonna go with that. Hit Enter and then let's relink it so that it doesn't mess up, so that it doesn't get messed up if we try and move this. So there is our poster grind distorted really cool grungy logo for let's say a horror movie. Now, if we're working at an agency or whatever client is out there, most likely we're gonna wanna present this uh, professionally and a lot of creative directors like to see a black on white and then a white on black. And what I did is I already have a template created. I think I just need to open it and here it is. I'm gonna get rid of these guides by hitting Command H, and then I'm gonna go back over to our to our logo. But I wanna keep all the assets and everything together so that if there's ever, uh, or, or when this goes to finish, that they know what was used exactly. And this will keep everything organized, and then you have your, your textures ready to go in case you wanna go back in and uh, modify anything. Or if you get some feedback from the client saying, hey, that's a little too grungy, can you tone it down? And it's just easier. So go ahead and put all of these files into a group, and then we're just gonna call this logo one, since this is our first poster grind horror logo. And usually we're gonna build out anywhere from three to five to six different logos for a client. And then let's say uh, each, each movie has about, I don't know, four or five different people working on logos that day. And then the creative director should have anywhere from 20 to 25 to choose from. And then they usually narrow down their favorites. But for right now, go ahead and hit Command C, copy this, and let's go to our logo template as soon as this is done copying. And let's drop it in here, Command V, and, and there it is. So let's go ahead and drop this down to size. And what we're gonna do is just return this back into a smart object. So you're like one smart object into another. And the reason being is just so that everything stays the same size with the distortion. And Command T, for transform and we're just gonna make it that big and now just kind of center it up right about there now we just need to drop in the white on black so go ahead and duplicate by hitting command j and then you can either uh put an adjustment layer with white and then attach it turn this into a group and we're gonna call this white and then just drag it over or what we could do is go ahead and start over get rid of that adjustment layer and push command i which will invert it so it'll go from black to white just depends what you want to do and there we go and now if you guys are like well what's up with color yeah of course we can always ask, add some cool color to it so i'm just adding an adjustment layer on top and then attaching it. So there we have a really red, you know, there's, you know, whatever, whatever the type of movie you're working on, you know, you got some really funky purples. That's pretty cool. Usually a funky yellow. I mean, it just depends, you know, and what happens is you'll start to use this on your poster design and you kind of use whatever color is going to go with your design, but it's usually a lot of experimentation. For now, we're just going to send this over to our creative director like this, and we can just go ahead and save this file as post. We're going to call this poster grind underscore logo, and then use your initials and then which number this is. This is our first one. So we're going to call this AS01 and then save it. And usually you can save it as a PDF, a JPEG. It's like whatever, whatever your creative director wants that you're working with. Save. And now it's good to go. Now 
Now, if you guys really want to do this, I would advise if you want to take your design serious, I would definitely go ahead and get yourself either a monthly subscription or annual subscription to Envato and just play around with all the textures and stock photography they have. And they have plenty of tutorials as well. And uh, the other cool thing is we get a little bit of a commission for people that use that and that helps us out and just keeps our channel running and uh, makes me a little more motivated to keep putting out these design tutorials dedicated to professional movie poster design. So thank you guys very much. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.